Hello everyone, this is Quebec and I'm a PhD candidate studying at the University of Arkansas in Recreation and Sports Management program. And my two co-authors are Dr. Stokowski from Clemson University and Dr. Fredley from Northern State University. And our study's title is Sports Management Faculty Members Mentorship of College Athletes. Briefly speaking, we looked at among the mentorship roles, we looked at nine different subscales inside the mentorship role. And if they differ, if they have meaningful difference statistically. And we also looked at if some of the demographic factors affect those difference in the statistical difference among the mentorship roles. Here's the contents for today. We will begin with introductions, methods, what kind of statistical analysis we used, results, and discussion based on our results. So before we begin, I want to begin with my personal story, sharing my personal story regarding my mentor when I was in my undergrads. During my undergraduate years, I was a common, normal student who worked hard, who studied hard, tried to get a good grades, but there was this concern remaining. Where would I go next? What will be my next step? My mentor in this picture was the one who encouraged me to continue studying, continue and pursue my graduate degree and not stop at the undergrad. So he was the one who also encouraged me to go abroad, especially in the United States, to the United States, because he also had his master's and PhD in Ball State and Rutgers. So he shared me his experience about his days when he was studying at the United States. And that really inspired me and that really made me want to study in this international, with the international students, with the international scale. So while I was lost after meeting him, I thought there was a clear path that I should pursue. And thanks to him, I am recording this video to present my study to everyone. And I am finishing my doctoral year as well, thanks to him. So that's my story about me and my mentor, someone who was lost about the future, getting a clear advice and clear feedbacks about what, should, what could be the next step and pursuing the steps even after the graduation. Now, having this in mind, let's see how we came up with our study. Just as I mentioned, the school and faculty's influence on student outcomes, just like me, the student outcomes is significant. However, in the studies, in the current studies, when we talk about the student outcomes, we usually say they are higher GPA and high retention rates. So, in order to achieve them, the schools and faculties have their roles. Before school was the most organized organization or the party that had to that had this effect towards the students. They developed many programs, many training programs and practice sessions for the students to achieve not only the high GPA or their academic records, but universities were the ones who helped the students to apply for job and to succeed in their jobs. Now, universities are asking or inviting the faculties as well to help these undergraduate students with not only their GPA, retention rates, but also in their next step, having that next step for the students. In that relationship, many studies have mentioned the effect of the faculty's mentoring relationship with the students. Studies have mentioned the positive results 
studies have mentioned the positive results of this mentoring relationship with the student and the faculty. The more students engaged in this mentoring relation with their faculties, the higher their academic outcomes, just as we mentioned before, the better they have, the higher GPA, the higher retention rates. Not only that, interestingly, the one of the study have done by Purdue, they provided this result that when they surveyed about 50, 80,000 people in the workplace and asked if they had a mentoring relationship when they were in the undergrads. And the result came out that if, if the people who had this mentoring relationship during their undergraduate years, the more they were engaged with their works and the more well-being, overall well-being they have, even after their undergraduate years. Yes. Interesting, isn't it? So then what about the student athletes? Let's look at the student athlete population. Many studies say, many studies say, sadly, student athletes are at risk population because they had this double burdens, double burdens, academics, athletic performance. With those in two big burdens on their shoulders, they feel isolated. They feel isolated and they feel this negative thoughts. They have this negative thoughts when they depress, they have depressions. Some of them feel depressions. So what will be the faculty's role then? What will be the faculty's role to help them? Should be mentoring relation should be coming in to help this student athlete population to get the most out of their universities. However, again, sadly, studies mention how the faculties perceive the student athlete populations. Student athlete populations, they are stigmatized, prejudiced. In what way that they are not interested in study, they are prioritizing their athleticism over their academics. That is why some studies show that faculties not interested not interested in mentoring the student athlete population. However, we utilize the theory from the intergroup contact theory, which developed by the Arport, Pettigrew, and Pettigrew and Chop. The main idea about this intergroup contact theory is that mutual communication, mutual communication between these two groups, in groups, out groups, they define it as in group and out groups. When they have this prejudice or stereotypes towards each other, when they communicate, when they communicate and when they have this opportunity to know more about each other, then there will be prejudice and the stereotypes be lessened, lessened and then build new thoughts, build new thoughts about the others. And this process, this process will be helping this in groups and out groups to think about each other in a new way and make their thoughts, make their thoughts as their basic thoughts instead of having the stereotypes or prejudice being kept in their minds. So the main purpose of this theory is that when intergroup communication occur, the prejudice and the stereotypes can be decreased. Using this theory, we came up with these two research questions. So now we know that mentoring is important. Mentoring relationship is important for the faculties and the undergraduate students. Does the mentoring role when it comes to mentoring the student athletes, if among those nine subscales, mentorship raw instrument we used in these nine subscales, does the scores, does the score differences, does the score differences, if they differ in statistical significant way, is there a meaning, is there a meaning with those differences? 
research question two, we looked at if the demographic factors, gender, especially gender and tenure status, if these two factors affect the differences among these scores that faculties scored them by answering our survey. To explain more about our methods, we utilized purposeful sampling. We sent out an invitation email to the faculties or students to those who are who added their email address to the NASM list self. So we sent out this invitation email to the NASM list self. And according to our result, when 141 participants initially opened the survey, but since we did not force the completion for the participants, there were 88 valid responses. Some of them did not complete the survey, so we were not able to use them. So we came out with 88 valid responses. The survey included demographic questions such as age, gender, race, and some more examples can be what kind of conference is your university affiliated at? Or how many student athletes do you teach in your normal semester? We utilize this mental raw instrument scale developed by Regens and McFarlane. There are nine subscales that we utilized, sponsor, coach, protect, etc. So each subscales were include were asked by three questions, by three questions with each of the subscales. Depending on how how much they agree with the questions, they chose the answer, and we aggregated those answers and made it came up with the average score per each each subscales. And we utilize repeated measures ANOVA and ANOVA to answer our research questions. Our results indicated among the participants, most of them were white and they were married or had a domestic partnership. And about half, about a little bit less than half were untenured faculty. And most of the participants were affiliated in non-Power 5 conferences. There were a little bit more male majority. And most of the participants mentioned that they are teaching one or more student athletes per their normal semester. According to our statistics results, we found that there is significant difference in mentorship role scores from faculty participants. This means that there is a st statistical significant differences among those average difference among those subscales. Next, we found there's lack of evidence to suggest that gender and faculty appointment, whether these two demographic factors affected this difference inside those subscales. Interestingly, we came out with this descriptive statistics and internal consistency reliability as well. So if you can see, there's a mean score and we found how, we found how different subscales had different mean scores and these differences has a statistical meaning. There is a significant difference among these nine subscales. And we were able to find that faculties, especially those who are in the sports management departments, they prioritize the role model as the mentor role, among the mentor roles, role model, acceptance, friendship, counseling, those kind of subscales were more prioritized than the other roles. 
we were able to find what the faculties think about what is the mental role. So for our discussion, we wanted to emphasize again, the importance, importance of mentoring undergraduate students. According to the previous studies, and we, as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, students outcomes, student outcomes is really affected by this mentoring relations and not only this student outcomes, after graduation, even after their grad, undergraduate students graduation in their workplace as well, their working ability environment is get affected, is affected by this mentoring relationships. That is why it is not enough, it's, it is never enough to emphasize this importance of mentoring of undergraduate student, undergraduate students. But as we mentioned, with that stigma that faculties have towards this college student athletes, through mutual understanding and utilizing this intergroup contact theory, those stigma and prejudice can be solved, can be lessened if there is a mutual understanding and mutual communication by developing their new thoughts, developing their new thoughts towards the other group, this prejudice and stereotypes can be lessened. With our statistical results, we, although we found that there is a difference, there's a statistical difference among those nine subscales, although Although role model was not the top score when we looked at the mean score, but, but we would like to suggest that role modeling is the main function and faculties should be striving to become a role model of their students who they are mentoring with. Previous studies have mentioned about the importance about being a role model to the students And previous studies also mentioned about the effect of the gender and tenure. However, studies also mentioned about the needs of more studies, more results coming up since there is lack of evidences to make it as a consensual agreement. So we, according to our result, even though the faculty status and gender did not affect the difference among those nine subscales, we would suggest that there are more studies needed to develop more consensual agreement about what would be the effect of the gender and tenure status of the faculties. These studies mentioned in the slides mention about the gender, how gender, cross-gender especially, how the cross-gender relationship when the mentoring relationship, when we look at the mentoring relationship does not affect, doesn't, did not affect, or whether it was a mere rumor that we have about the, especially the students' productivity. This study looked at the graduate students' research productivity when they were mentored by the cross-gender faculties and the tenure status as well. When the faculty is not tenured, it's not tenured. The studies mention how if mentoring students is not required with their tenure appointment, with their tenure appointment, the more likely faculties will not be interested in mentoring students. However, again, as I mentioned at the, as I mentioned before, there's still more results needed to come up with better understandings about this causal relationship between the faculty's demographic factors and the mentoring relationships. Our study was able to find that these demographic factors do not differ, do not affect about faculty's perception about what should be the prioritized among those nine subscales. So we would like to suggest more studies should be done to come up with the causal relationship and what could be the more prioritizing role 
among those mentorships. This is it for my presentation. I would like to show my deepest, deepest appreciation to Dr. Stokowski and Dr. Fredley for their advice. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please contact me if there is any questions, thoughts, feedbacks about this research. My email address is shown on the slides. I'll be more than happy to hear from you and looking forward to making this research more, more much better study. Thanks to your feedback, All right? Stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. Thank you so much for watching.